Please all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. For you merited to bear. Alleluia. Has risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. Because the Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, o God who by the, the resurrection of your, of your Son, Son, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, you made glad the whole world. Grant, grant we beseech you, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, Mary his mother, we may attain the choice, the choice of eternal life. Through Christ, through Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mary, help of Christians. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to the shrine of St. John Bosco the Dreamer. Together with our personal intentions, we also include the following. For the gift of life and birth intentions of Jericho Muriel, Lance Adrian, Kenneth Lumawood, Don Enrico, Raphael, and Kurt Cyrus. Thanksgiving Mass to Senior Santo Nino, Mama Mary, St. Joseph, Saints Peter and Paul, Our Lady of Manawag and San Pedro Calungsod, for all the blessings received, good health, peace of mind, and continued guidance. For the healing recovery and good health of Leucadia Sabilita, Victoria Novea Panes, Sabina Galarion, Daisy Pen Penaso, May, and a brother George Celis. For the intentions of Jose Enzo, Brian, Ray Amil, Joseph, CJ and Macy Carandang. For the eternal repose of the souls of Mario Alonte, Antonio Quijano Sr., Pelisa Quijano, Ludivino Quijano, pa Pablo Sumandig, Tito Rodriguez, Zinaida Sotes, Nestor Sotes, Dante Saison, Alejandro Saison, Guillermo Huezan, Paulino Sala, Benito Sala, Manuela Sala, Bernardo Rosal, Benito Chua, Julia Ababa, Sergio Ragas, Fortunata Dorolev, Ricardo, Antonio Aliganga, Antero Aliganga, Damiana Aliganga, Roberto Bacos, and Nimis Nimisha Bacos. And for the eternal repose of the souls in purgatory. Please all stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the fifth Sunday of Easter. And together with our personal intentions, we also include those intentions that we have er offered in this Holy Mass, those we have heard earlier, and for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who need a consolation from the Lord. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Sent to heal the contrite of heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented this man to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks the Lord on the heart. With a ten string light chant, his praises. Those 
those who fear Him, upon those who look for His kindness, to deliver them from Serve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us. As we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. from the Holy Gospel according to John. To Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, 
so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Fama said, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. One of the most challenging ministry for us priests and religious is that of reaching out to families whose member has gone ahead because of sickness or tragedy. And those who minister to them have to choose the words or actions that they will say or do to ease the pain or to console those who are left behind. Pope Francis, during his pastoral visit to the Philippines, especially in Tacloban after the typhoon Yolanda said, I do not have the words to tell you, but I am here with you. Most of the times, our presence and assurance of prayer is more than enough to give consolation to the bereaved family. Do not let your hearts be troubled. These were the words of Jesus, the words of comfort to his apostles at the Last Supper, the night before he died. And in that gospel, he said what must have been to men of the ancient world, one of the most astonishing things you have ever heard. He said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. For the Jews, it was an article of faith that no one could ever see God. And as a matter of fact, they thought that anyone who did, by some accident, catch just a glimpse of the face of God would die instantly. And all through the scriptures, we find occasions where angelic messengers appeared. And when people saw them, thinking that they were looking at God himself, they were convinced that their lives were at an end. They would have to die because they saw the face of God. But when Jesus said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, because the Father and I are one. This is an assurance that whoever has seen Jesus has already seen the Father. For sure, many of his apostles and those people who saw Jesus did not die. It is an assurance for them that when they saw Jesus, they also see the Father. This is also true in our daily lives. If one did not have a chance to meet the Father of someone, just look at the son or look at the daughter. In some way, some qualities can be seen in them. The Apostle Paul said in his letter to the Corinthians, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and have faith also in Jesus. These are consoling words from the Lord to his apostles. And these words are also for us, especially today. 
The risen Jesus shares not only His consoling words to us, but His abiding and active presence in our lives today. What are those that troubles us? Things weigh on our hearts, from little misunderstandings to great tribulations, a sickness, an accident, a suffering loved one, or a friend in need. Jesus' words reassure them that He would always be with them through faith. And He wants us to know the same, that He never leaves us. He knows all that we suffer and go through, and He cares. Our Lord Jesus Himself is not one who is away from persecution and suffering when He was with us thousands of years ago. He knows how it is to be human. He knows how it is to experience suffering and pain. And finally, our Lord was asked by His disciples, to which He replied, I am the way and the truth and the life. This clear answer from our Lord serves as a guiding principle for His disciples and for people in every age. Brothers and sisters, when we are lost, He is the way. When we are in darkness, He is the light. When we are confused, He reveals the truth. So let us take everything that is weighing in our hearts or troubling us and bring it to the Lord in order to find light, truth, and life. If we had more of Jesus in our lives, we would have less fear, worries, and anxieties. We would still have problems. God never promised that he would not, we would not have problems, but we can overcome them better with Jesus in us and with us. Our best example of this is our Blessed Mother Mary. She was chosen by God for a great mission. And when she heard this message from the angel that she would be the mother of God, she was greatly troubled. Yet God, through the angel, comforted her by assuring her of His presence through the Holy Spirit that will come upon her. Her yes to this great mission from God was a determined one because she believed that God will be with her all throughout. Her yes opened the path for the way, the truth, and the life to be born in us, Jesus Christ Himself. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not be troubled. Let us have faith in God, in our Lord Jesus Christ. He assures us of His abiding and active presence. And He also shows to us that He is the way, the truth, and the life. These indeed are consoling words telling us that we are not alone in whatever we are undergoing in life. And together with our Blessed Mother, especially as we are in this month of May, the Flores de Mayo. Let us renew our faith and trust, especially in the Holy Eucharist. He, the way, the truth, and the life, is present with us in every Eucharistic celebration, and we receive Him in Holy Communion, and He journeys with us today and every day of our life. Let us also become instruments of consolation, to our brothers and sisters who are suffering. We, who had experienced the consolation from the Lord, cannot but become consolers of those in need today. Amen. Let us all stand and profess our faith in our loving 
and merciful God, let us use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Gathered around the risen Christ, our way to the Father, we feel fully confident in His boundless love for us. Hence, we submit to Him our petitions as we say, Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. For the universal church, the community of disciples gathered around Jesus, the living stone, may she be for all mankind a source of inspiration and hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. For the Holy Father, our bishop, our parish priest, other and other spiritual leaders, may they mirror to us the holiness of Jesus and lead us to an ever greater communion with the Father. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. For all those who have lost the sense of direction in life and feel confused and discouraged, may they find the teaching of the church in our good example the guidance and encouragement they need. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. For the terminally ill and those who are about to die, may they find the promises of Jesus, the foundation for their hope to live forever in the house of the Father. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. For each of us, and the rest of our parish community. May we always be united in brotherly solidarity and love around Jesus, the cornerstone of our spiritual edifice. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, lead us to the Father. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life offered us in Jesus, your Son and our brother, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, Midifil and Ruben, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the help of Christians, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John Bosco, Saint Dominic Savio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. O Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle, where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Keep your family, we pray, O Lord, in your constant care, so that under your protection they may be free from all troubles and by good works show dedication to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.